puts him in a pit, allows that to happen, allows him to be sold as a slave, allows him to be thrown in prison because of a lying woman, only to raise him up to be prime minister one day. Isn't that funny? I mean, we would have gone about it another way, but God does it another way. Perhaps Isaiah is right when he says his ways are not our ways. Neither his thoughts are and the heavens are higher than the earth. So are his ways from our ways. And the east is far from the west. Isn't God funny? I mean, this year I think God was funny some of the time. I think it was really funny. I mean, I, I look at the life of Mandela, for instance, I say, isn't it funny that God would use someone from prison to free us? But these are the slogan, it's an oxymoron. Eh? It's, it's a funny thing that God uses the, the, the very thing that is, that, that is different to achieve a particular. It is funny to me, I don't know about you, when I read the Bible that for God to rescue 2.5 million people from, from exile and slavery, of 450 years, he uses a fugitive, someone who's run away from that place in order to come back, rescue the people. For me, God is funny. It is funny to me how, really, in the Bible, God would use the smallest boy who come from the smallest family to be an army general to tell soldiers an army of soldiers to say, look, you guys, you're not fit for war. Go home. I, I only need 300 to defeat 100,000. Church, you're not, uh, you're not with me. I need 300 to defeat 100,000 without weapons. But with trumpets, it's got some of power and power. Sorry, there was no PR. Maybe it was going to use PR. But with, with trumpets and not with a sword and a shield. It, it is funny to me how God would use a shepherd boy to fight a giant that was undefeated. Sure. We serve a mysterious God. So, such that when we think we know him, we actually don't know him. I'm, I'm speaking about, about 2013. Things happened this year that we couldn't understand why. Perhaps you lost your loved one. And you are trying to understand God's ways. A singer says, if I do not see God's hand, I trust God's heart. Yes, sir. And I want to say to you, if you lost a loved one this year, that you may not understand why. And why that one and not this one? You know, there was, one, there was this one lady. That's why she had, she had four kids. And then one died. And she said, ah, why would God take this one and leave this other three? <laughs> I, I, I thought, that, that, was, that was in the funeral, I mean. And, and that, but she said it really waiting to say, this was her best. I, I you know, other parents they treat kids, you know. She said, why would God, I don't know. But all I know is God allowed it, allowed that to happen. I don't know. And so we find in this text that God says something funny to Abraham. He says, Abraham, Abraham. Abraham says, hear my that's good. Those are very important words. God has said that sometime at the beginning of time. He said to his servant, who was the only servant then, where, where are you that I didn't say here am I? Instead he hid. But Abraham, we find Abraham here saying, here I am. Those are powerful words. We need a church like that. We need Christians like that. Who are going to say, who are going to say when God calls, he says, here am I. Before the instruction. Bama, Bama, so that they, they don't say, um, Lord, what do you want? No. First, I fail yourself. Say, hear my. Hear my. I'll do it. Then God gives a strange instruction. God says, take that son. Hey. Thy only son. Yes. Listen. He qualifies him. Whom you love. Yes. Take him. And make him. Offer him as a bad offering problem. Yes. That's very funny to me. This is a God who is a custodian and an author of the same law that says thou shalt not kill. Today he says kill. You know, some of us will come to church and say, Hey, Pastor, uh, elders, can you please pray for me? I had a dream 
last night. God said, I must tell you, the devil said, I must keep because that is something we do not deem God would say. Right. Sure. And there comes the problem. Our faith instruction from the Bible, what only that? It's not for us to have faith in what God says and does. Yeah. But it is to have faith in God. Yes, sir. I'll tell you what. Jesus says one day, believe in me. Believe in, my, believe in God. Believe also in me. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. You know what? We believe the mansions. The promise of the mansions. The, the guys spoke about mansions. Why? Because we love that. Right? We, we believe in heaven. Pastor Bob one said, one time says, we use, we use Jesus as a taxi and church as a, as, as a, a taxi rank. says, we, this is where we get our taxi called Jesus. Then we get in. When we get in, we, we are interested not in the text, you can see. That's why we, that's why we see at the door of the text, because we don't care about the text. We are interested in the destination. See the doors, yeah? Right. When we get to our doors, which is heaven, we will slap the, the door closed, because that's for it. And we are interested in what? The streets of gold, the pain, gates, and death. That is not having faith in Jesus. It is having faith in what Jesus says and does. And the instruction is not to have faith in what God says and does. You have a problem that day, you cannot decide what, what God has said and does. When you do not understand what God has said and does, you will lose your faith. Yes, sir. Sure. Who's in the faith to the Lord? Yeah. He says, He said, speaking about the Sabbath, He says, the Sabbath is like a party. But the party is about God. Right? He says, Tina, we go to the we like going to the party and not to the person of the party. Right? When we get there, we eat, we, we dance, we do everything, right? We're not interested so much in the person of the one of the party. He said, that's how we cheat the Sabbath. We cheat the Sabbath as we you know what? It's about the Sabbath. This is will be Sabbath. Right? But let me tell you, the Sabbath is trying to point you to God. Yeah. The, the Sabbath is about God. If you miss the Lord of the Sabbath and you keep the Sabbath, you have not kept the Sabbath. And so in so many times, we believe in what God would say and do. But when it comes time, like Abraham's time would be very much confused. Listen to Abraham. When, when God had finished telling you, would take your son, sacrifice him. You know what Abraham did? The Bible says, early the next morning, Abraham got up. I mean, I give him a tip. The guy's faithful man. Yeah, sure. As I'm able to Sarah, he didn't go to Sarah and say, Sarah, hey, you know what? You are my spouse, you know? A second opinion. Could it be? Abraham just gets up, settles the donkey, the Bible says, take two of his servants and take the knife, the wood, the fire, and Isaac, and off they go. I have a problem with that. God said to Abraham, Abraham, take thy son, Isaac, whom you love, and go and sacrifice him in a place I will tell you about. But listen to Abraham. Abraham takes other stuff with him too. He takes the donkey, he takes the servants, two servants, he takes the knife and the fire, and then off he goes. It is because, I think, when God gives an instruction, sometimes he doesn't give the in-between. When God says to us, as a church, guys, build a church, God won't come down and say, buy some land, you know, get bricks. Get in the church. No, God will, God will say, give what? Do what? In the church. There is room in God's instruction for common sense. Yeah. Most of the time, the church prays about stuff you should pray for. Yeah. You should pray about. No. Yes, in the same way, this church, we believe in this. We believe that the church is both human and divine. Yes, sir. Don't make it all out divine. Yes, because God uses human elements to achieve his end. Yeah. That's why everyone says, he did not use Unfallen angels to achieve the gospel, but he used me and you. 
There's room for us to think. When all you build your own house at home, do you ever pray about it and say, you know what, before I go to cash pay blood, should I go? <laughs> about God's thing. No, I'm going to take the donkey. Take the donkey. Make preparations. Make preparations so that you can achieve God's instruction. And so the guy takes the donkey. He takes, you know, um, the two servants and off they go. The Bible says, on the third day, he saw the place afar off. And then this is what he says. He says, Stay here with the donkey. While I and the lad will go yonder. And the yonder one, you know? He makes it more in the We'll go up yonder. Listen. The guy is lying in faith, though. He says, We'll come back. Tick number two. Take number one, he takes God at his, at his word. God is doctrinally incorrect, theologically incorrect. Take number one, but Abraham goes anyhow. And then here he says to the servants, we will come back to you. Father ah. Lord, when God has instructed you, please do remember. Even if you belong to a fellowship, to a congregation, it, there's a time when they need to stay at the foot yeah. of the mountain. You and your instruction and your sacrifice must go on. We will meet there eventually. But let me tell you, the journey is what is personal. That's why we call Jesus a personal savior. All right. It's not a congregational savior. Someone says, no, evangelist must evangelize. No, you are the evangelist. You evangelize. Yeah. What about you? Yeah. Don't worry for the church to do that. Yeah. There's stuff that the church cannot do. The church can only take you to the mountain. Yeah. But not to the mountain top. Yeah. No, church can take you there. Yeah. God would do that will really amaze us. Now, this year, maybe you lost a relationship this year. And up to this day, you're asking yourself, how did I lose that boyfriend? <laughs> or how did I lose that girlfriend? My sister or brother, let me tell you. God has better in store for you. God has been wondering anyway. Why you were dating that guy? Because there are many fish in the sea, but you chose an octopus. Yes, 
Messiah. Like, hey, listen, uh, uh, Moses, call, call Elijah to tell you know, to tell uh, to, to switch on the main switch for the echo again. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are not bad. I wonder when they arrive right here, you know, they must be cool. They must be safe. And so heaven does that. When they walk in, Bangana 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 Oh, 
strong I am. If I don't pick up any weight and go through pain of lifting weights, how will I know it? Me I was or is it 10 kg or that's my weight but how will I know that? Unless I go through that kind of pain. Well, I've come to tell you. This year you may have gone through pain. And you are going to go through pain again. It is the order of life. Yeah. But let me tell you, it is testing your faith so that it becomes strong yeah. in the Lord. But ask any teacher, mm. when you give out your present paper to students, yeah. you're not testing the students so you as a teacher could know how well they do. You're with them the entire year. In fact, you've come, you more, you more or less know, okay, this is my branch one, this is my branch spark. I love it. Night time. You know, you, you, you know the student. You have an idea. No? But when you give them, when you give up that question paper during exam time, you are testing them so that they can see how good or how bad they are in, in the subject. That's why it is them that receive the reports, not you. So Abraham was being tested by God. Not that, not so that God can know. If Abraham is faithful in him, he already knows that he is the chief. So that Abraham can know how faithful he is. Now listen. I said, ask Abraham, take number three. And then when he says, Father, I can see the wood is here. The fire is here. The knife is here. Where is the le Abraham, the legend? He says, my son, the Lord will provide for himself. <laughs> and they journey on. When they get to the top of the mountain, as they get to the top of the mountain, Abraham looks at Isaac. You know, that look was not a just a father to son look, but it was a father to son look of despair. Especially of Abraham, because Abraham knows what he's about to do. And Isaac has an inclination of what his father is going to do. And so the old man, I can imagine the old man, he has to build an altar. An altar was built with rocks. I can imagine him there at the top of the mountain, moving slowly and say to Isaac, Isaac, no, don't, don't do it. I have to do it. I need to build the heart. And taking the whole day, moving one rock. Sure. On top of another. One rock and another. And Isaac is thinking, hey, I just left all of this. Full of boy, it better not be me. <laughs> if I was him, sure. I would have said to my father, Father, yeah, let me just go down my room. <laughs> is done and the wood is on top of the altar. And then the Bible says, and Abraham tied, he bound Isaac. That, that guy, he was a teenager, about 18 years old. I found out I'm a teenager, which, but anyway, let's keep it. <laughs> he bound himself and he bound Isaac. As he bound Isaac, Isaac is standing still. Allow me to say, there comes the next father of faith. Yeah. Isaac himself. Yeah. For Isaac, somewhere at the back of his medulla, he knew there must be a way out of this. I don't see it now. Even though he's bound. He says, I don't see it now. But God must provide. After they bound Isaac, the Bible said, and Abraham laid Isaac on top of the wood. Listen to this. He took the knife. From my dad, it was no joke. He took the knife. I don't know whether the old man sharpened the knife. You know what? He had the sound of a knife. Imagine I was going to you. Sharpen the knife, cut. And verse 13 says, he was ready, his hand was up, ready to slaughter. And then the angel of the Lord cried from heaven. The angel cried with his words, Abraham, Abraham. Now I know 
that you fear the Lord. For you have not withheld thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom you love. The God has passed the test. Now I know. Can God really say that about you? He says, now I know that you fear me. Why? Because you have not withheld the very thing you love the most. Now I want to say to you, the biggest test comes with the things that you love. are very dear to us. God does not, neither does the devil test us with things we can do without any of you. He tells us with the best. And so, after the angel says those words, the Bible says in the King James, behind him, yes, there was a ram caught in the thicket yes, with its horns. And the Bible says, behold, Abraham looked unto it. Church, I've got a question. Abraham was busy with the altar and Isaac over there at the same mountain. Where was the thicket? The thicket was there. As they were busy preparing the altar, where was the ram? I'm sure the ram was there. Why? Because the angel did not drop a ram from heaven. Then suddenly, miraculously, the rain was dead for them to not to know. But allow me to suggest to you, in the Yogi International Version, yeah. <laughs> that when Abraham and Isaac got to the place on the third day, in Israel today, from where Abraham was coming from, anyway, it is three days walk on foot to get to Mount Moria, even today. It takes about three days for you to get to the mountain. Now allow me to say that as Abraham arrived on the third day, on that foot of the mountain, and they were about to go up here, allow me to say to you, because the other historians tell us the other end of the mountain is where Lot and Sodom used to be. Abraham, remember, and, 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 and Lot, they separated two ways. The other one went to the east, the other one went to the west. Now, allow me to say to you that because sheep have a tendency of being lost, that sheep that is not caught in the thicket, it was a lost sheep. It was a lost sheep. We find a sheep without a shepherd. It is caught in the thicket. No sheep. But the thing I love the most with our God is our God is ahead of us. From Lord's side, we are told it takes us one and a half days journey on foot to get to the mountain. So if the sheep was lost, this is my version of the Bible, from Lord's side, that sheep must have gotten there a day and a half in advance.
We went to schools. They promote the scientific method. See, touch, smell, taste. Yeah. You be. Yeah. That's a challenge. Then we have a problem with faith. Faith says, even if I don't know. Yeah.
Some of the activities that we did this year were different from the other activities. Although we are still expecting our partner not to join our team, uh, but we are growing the life of this event. So I want to thank God that He gave us the opportunity to concentrate much on bringing men together through prayer and sports. I thank you. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Says, 
Don't take the news your chest if you're going to do it. It's a blessing to be saved. Amen. God is not true. <laughs> So, so I said before, I was asked to speak on behalf of the single people. Um, and, and I thought, so, so what do I say? And, and, and what do I give thanks for? Um, so I thought long and hard about it. And there, there are certain things that, that I love in my life. And God being the first. I'm also a massive fan of sport. But there's something that is very interesting to me. And that's the life of a soldier. I've always wanted to be a soldier. And, and I'm sure one day, when I'm um, just a few years on from now, I'm going to retire from my current job and, uh, and um, be a soldier. But I also like songs. So I thought, so what can I share? And, and something came to me. That there's a story about a soldier. His name was Major T.W. Whittle. Um, he went to... He went, he, he was a medical, medical soldier, so he went to this camp. Um, and, and as he walked around the camp, he saw various um, individuals. And one of the people that he saw was, was a young man who was, who was dying of a fever. So he, he knelt beside him and he said to him, Son, are you a Christian? And, and, and the young man said, No, I'm not. But he said, But my father and my mother, they're Christians. And he spoke to him about, about the love of God and who God is. And, and when he left, he had a certain feeling that he hadn't quite made an impression upon him. And he left concerned and it was bothering him. And he came back two days later. And when he came, he was whistling a song. And as he whistled, he approached the young man's tent. And the, the, the title of the song is Jesus Savior Pilot Me. And as he whistled on, the young man listened. And he could see in his eyes that there was something about the song that touched him. As he finished the song, the, the young man asked, So tell me, will Jesus pilot me? And certainly the, the medical missionary said, Oh, yes, he will. And, 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 I, and I reference the song because it's a song which I think as single people, if, if you listen to the words or if you read the words, we've all been through tempestuous seas. We've been through unknown waves that are rolling about us. In fact, we've sailed through places where we didn't know what lie beneath the waters. His, his chart and his compass they were, they were ahead of us. And I love the last verse where he says, When at last I'm near the shore, there will be fearful breakers. And I know that when I look back on 2013 and I think of all the people or all the people that I know who have passed on, I know that the fearful breakers are there. But he's been with us. And we're here today standing on the frontiers of 2014 because we've just been leaning on his breast. And I know that as we approach 2014, we should neither be afraid, neither dismayed. For we know he will pilot us. And, and the same people, we just want to give thanks for, for God's love and for God's providence and, and he's watched over us. And, and as I wrap up, um, there's one thing that I want to share that through all the triumphs and yet through all the tribulations, through all our successes, yet through all our failures, we've stood amongst our monuments and we've stood tall and we've stood proudly in 2013. But along the way we've also been dismayed by the ruins that we stand amongst in our lives. But God is still with us. God is still with us. And I'm comforted personally by 
Joshua 1 verse 9 and it reads have I not commanded thee be strong and of good courage be not frightened neither be ye thou dismayed for Jehovah thy God is with you wherever we go thank you
and belts and when you grow up. There's certain things that really change and one of them is as I grow up I become very tired. And 
the Lord with you for us that day? Right. I'm here to represent um, the department that is assisting us to get the work done and to get the gospel to everybody so that we can go and participate in that day. Right. I'm standing on behalf of the ministries and we have a lot to be thankful for. We want to thank God first for enabling us to get a platform to minister. People think that we come here and all we do is technology. No, we are here to evangelize, we are here to minister, and we are reaching out to the world. We want to thank friends of the ministry this year, as members of this church, the church board in particular, and all members of Kelvin SDA Church. Your support has been overwhelming. It has made 12 months of work seem like um, a single day at work. Really need to thank you for that and may God bless all of you. Um, figures wise, we are standing in an extremely healthy position which we never thought we would be by today. We have almost 2,000 people who follow what we write on Facebook. We have over 500 people who join our services online at different times from all over the world. Um, we have close to 2,000 people who are actually viewing material and programs that you are rendering here in the church on YouTube. So as a church, we are, we are still waiting out. We need to reach out to more people. But I want to thank all of you for participating throughout the year so that we could um, get the gospel out to somebody out there. One thing that I did not know, and I only picked it up as we were writing our little thank you speech, was that even though we are represented as a department that has one official person, our department has the most number of people at work every summer. And I want to thank every single one of them. I might miss out a name, but I'm going to call out names. And I want to thank these people because for the past 12 months, Every Sabbath, they come here to do their part. Some stand behind the cameras, some sit behind computers, but at the end of the day, they come together to produce one service. And I'm going to read these names, and I hope God blesses these people abundantly. Abu, uh, Brian, Kaye, Monica, Skoliwe, Mfundo, Zitelo, Mr. Rangkopa, the Simmons, which is Ulo, Dani, and Father. <laughs> Elder Makuba, Makubelo. Uh, Kolani Mahote. Saidon. Pastor Mabena. Ukushe. Uachi. The church board. And all church members who fellowship yet tell me. It's been a wonderful year, and may God bless you. I'm uh, really grateful for everything that you've done so that we can push the gospel. Now, just before I sit down, um, yeah, is, must pay attention. Yeah, um, he spoke about a song and he said he doesn't like that song, which says, Sihamba, Sihamba Nae. As many ministries, we have a problem with that. And, and, I'm, and I'm going to illustrate it. When I get into my car, and I drive with my wife and my two daughters. Ahama nam. Ahama nam, parami charge. They can't dispute it. They must never dispute it. We are in this journey together and we want to make sure that we will get to heaven. It is Abana Yujesu Yeah. yeah. And even though Samba and I, he's still in charge. And we don't dispute it. We all do respect the police. So for me to stand down, I'm going to ask Kutli now if he can just lead us in that chorus. <laughs> and please don't embarrass me and go with him while you are seated. Amen. Masamba and I say, Pagama, Amen. Thank you. I knew she was coming, but I was going to be the Isaac. I said, yes, I was going to be the Isaac.
Okay, must have uh, the only time we keep quiet is when you must have a name. 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 Must